In the wake of the war, Soviet Union was seen as a mighty superpower. With the enormous army and stockpile of arms, it was, certainly. In 1949, it carried out the successful test of a nuclear bomb. This put it on par with the United States. It was a huge event. All newspapers throughout the world published information about it and the reaction of the Western powers. But Stalin knew that this image of a mighty Soviet Union was partially an illusion. The country was reeling from devastation from the war. Today's demographic research showed that no less than 27 million lives were lost. Demobilization, you can see how happy these people were. They are coming from Berlin. The slogan on top of the train is from Berlin, and they are greeted by happy crowds. But it was 11 million people. They had no jobs, and many had no professional skills. And millions of wounded and disabled needed the government's permanent support. These were people who were not easily intimidated and had little to lose. Many struggled to survive. On top of it, veterans brought back stories about wealthier pre-war life abroad. Of course, after the war, their deeds were commemorated in memorials like that. Uh, this is Stalingrad. But the reality was much harsher and sadder. Artist Gennady Badrov painted uh, uh, the pictures of veterans. There are quite a number of them. This is just one of them, a portrait of uh, Ivan Zabora, hero of the Battle of Stalingrad. Veterans had a very hard life. They were not needed. The state could not support them properly. So those who had families were very lucky. Many did not. And many of them ended in nursing homes. One such nursing home was in Valarm Island. And uh, the quality of the care was not very good there. On top of that, of course, uh, Russia at that time, the European part of Russia, was uh, just a ruin. Thousands of towns and villages destroyed, cities and factories in ruins. Of course, agricultural production was at a minimum. Famine peaked in 1946-47. One and a half million people died at that time. New draconian measures were introduced. Stealing a loaf for bread could end up in years in prison. Even in towns there were food shortages. White bread, meat, sugar, oil, butter, cereals, even potatoes and milk were a rarity. The situation with livestock was desperate. In 1953, the same number of head of cattle was in agriculture as in 1939, and a third less than in 1928. The same number of pigs as in 1929. Of course, uh, at that time, the population lived with rationing cards. If you lost it, it was not renewed. Stalin appointed a commission headed by Khrushchev uh, to investigate the matter. The commission recommended an increase in purchase prices. Stalin was highly displeased and instead ordered a significant increase of taxes on peasants. Khrushchev and his colleagues did not object. They just did nothing. They tried to sit it out. 
The situation reminded the late 1920s. With the advent of the Cold War, the country had to increase its military potential. It had to rebuild its military industry. Yet there was no money. Whatever reserves there were, they were already invested in the developing its nuclear capacity. And unlike the 1920s, there were no peasants to extract funds from because kolkhozes had nothing to give. The government decided to stabilize the economic situation through a currency reform. During the war, money was simply printed. Inflation skyrocketed. In December 1947, a tenfold devaluation of the ruble was announced. The reform was prepared in secret, but some party Soviet officials uh, had a worth of it. So they were able to escape the worst consequences. The general public was deprived of its savings overnight. Rationing ceased, uh, and this resulted in temporary food shortages. But the famine of 1946-47 was not repeated. Soon the shops were full, and the government obtained the funds for its new project. Stalin played a very active role in the design of the reform and uh, uh, in his draft of the text he promised that this would be the Soviet people's final sacrifice. Well, it was not. <laughs>